All right, what's going on guys? So today I'm bringing you an update video on my 2017 Honda Accord Coupe EXL V6. I've had it for just about 10,000 miles. We're about to hit it. We're not quite there. We're at like 9,900, but it sounds better for a video if I just say 10,000. So that's what we're going with. So here it is. And uh, I've only made a couple of changes to the car, but I just wanted to kind of give, this is going to be more like of an opinionated video than my normal car update videos usually are. And so I just want to go ahead and go over the things I like about it, the things I don't like, and you know, just how it's doing uh, four months and 10,000 miles into ownership. So go ahead and start with the outside. There's not much changed out here. I didn't really change too much about the car. Still got this lovely uh, modern steel metallic gray color, which the car is a little bit dirty, but that was kind of intentional. And uh, just to kind of show you how good it still looks after like two, this is a solid two weeks of no washes. I mean, obviously it hasn't rained or anything recently, but this is two weeks without a wash. And I mean, yeah, if you get up close, you can kind of tell that it's a little bit dirty. But uh, from a normal distance, it still looks really good. And uh, that's something I am really happy about because I used to have a black car, a 2013 Accord Coupe, and that thing looked like crap after about 24 hours of washing it. And so, yeah, really nice there. Uh, still got the red logos up front. I was looking at getting some sort of like paint protection film or something just for the leading edge of this hood because it, uh, my last car did get uh, pretty much annihilated with rock chips and so I was thinking about uh, getting something like that eventually. Other than that, not too much has changed around the exterior of the car. I did only get one new addition uh, aesthetically and it's actually around back so go ahead and do a quick little walk around beautiful day today so I figured it'd be a good time to make this video and there's no one around so kind of uh, less awkward than normal. I did get the uh, Honda Factory Performance duck lid, uh, deck lid uh, spoiler. I was going to say duck bill but uh, yeah so went ahead and got this spoiler. It was about $300 from College Hills Honda which is a, uh, a dealership in Ohio but they also sell accessories and stuff online so perfect bolt-on you know no, no modifications required obviously since it's a factory part and it kind of gives the car that uh, cool look small dick uh, so yeah so I'm really happy with this just kind of gives the car you know a little bit more of a unique look and you know I'm, I'm a fan of spoilers and you know I'm a fan of like small spoilers so it really does a lot for the aesthetics of the car I think other than that, not much else has changed. Still got the red logo, still got the Borla exhaust, uh, the rear diffuser down below. Nothing has really changed, so yeah. I did uh, also add a K-Tuner sticker because, Jesus, what is with the loud-ass cars around here lately? Anyway, uh, put a K-Tuner sticker on there because I obviously have a K-Tuner and so got to represent the brand a little bit, but yeah, there she is from the rear. Kind of a crappy, or kind of a uneven lighting, so I do apologize for that. Uh, of course, I pulled the wheels and tires off my old car, and so, you know, they're not brand new like the car is, but I've had, I have like well over 30,000 miles on these tires, and they're still good. I mean, uh, <clears throat> the, uh, the tread obviously isn't brand new anymore, but I think the last time I measured them, they were at like 5 and 6, 30 seconds, so that's about 50% tread life, which is pretty nice for uh, over 30,000 miles. Of course, I've got the uh, Axis Sport XQ wheels. They've been totally fine. Um, so, yeah, and I think they match well with the gray of the car. I mean, obviously my last car was black, and that's kind of what, the reason I picked the color of wheels, but I think the gray matches pretty well with the gray. It kind of, it's sort of kind of like a monotone look, but I'm pretty happy with the way it looks. There's a side profile of the car, and yeah, so, um, this car, when the 9.5, which is what the community calls it, in other words, the uh, facelift of the 9th Gen Accord came out, uh, I wasn't too sure if I liked it better than the, uh, you know, pre-facelift model, but now I think I definitely do. I mean, there were, there were certain things about it that I liked, you know, from the start, but then, you know, I just wasn't too sure about the more aggressive uh, body lines and stuff, but, or really the front and rear bumpers is what the, what the uh, majority of the changes entailed, but now I actually really love it. I just, uh, th this car is, uh, really really nice i really love the aesthetic of the nice gen accord in general and this one just gives it a little bit more you know pizzazz 
And uh, yeah, main, main things I like the most are the new headlights and taillights. Those just look really cool. And you know, just kind of the sweeping lines of the bumpers, especially in the rear. I mean, the rear end is probably my favorite part of this car because the rear end on the uh, the pre facelift was kind of boring, and this one just gives it a little bit more flair. And especially from like this angle, it looks really, really sexy. So, and plus the uh, the little uh, LED lights in the tail lights look really, really cool at night. I wish I could show you that, but obviously it's like. 11 in the morning so kind of can't so anyway that's about it for the exterior uh, type of stuff I'll go ahead and pop the hood I did give the car a full detail uh, three or four weeks ago by a friend of mine it's uh, kind of the perks of working at a dealership you you uh, get to know friends that are uh, in the car industry and yeah one of my friends is a professional detailer so I had the car professionally detailed about three four weeks ago obviously with all the bugs and stuff you know and the dirt on the car it's not uh, perfect anymore but yeah so go and take a look under here he, he detailed my engine bay as well because before this was like really really dirty and stuff and just you know dusty from sitting because this car sat on the dealership a lot uh, for about a year and a half before I purchased it it was one of the last uh, 2017 models that they had on the lot and this one was manufactured in August of 2016 anyway the point is it sat a lot and kind of got dirty but you know that's all fixed up now of course we have the wonderful J35 Y1 engine which I'm absolutely in love with I'll get to that more once we get to the driving portion of this uh, you know update but yeah I just wanted to go and show you that my engine bay is all nice and clean now also I did also install an AFE uh, dry air filter just uh, you know because why not and uh, yeah, so pretty happy with that. Just kind of uh, gives it a little bit of a different sound. So yeah, that's about it. It's uh, pretty much all I have to say for under the hood. Just wanted to give you guys a quick sneak peek of that. So without further ado, I'll go ahead and climb in the interior of the car. We'll talk about some things about in the interior and then I'll switch to the driving portion and do that. All right, so here we are. Here is the interior of the uh, Accord and uh, yeah, so I'm gonna go ahead and climb in, I guess, because it's super hot out and I like to turn the air conditioning on. But uh, yeah, before I do that, um, the interior is really nice in this. I mean, I've heard, I've seen some people that are like, eh, you know, this interior looks kind of dated in 2017 or 2018 now, and I kind of don't really agree. I really like the, uh, like the smooth lines of the uh, dashboard and just the way things are laid out. I really enjoy it. Of course, got the uh, carbon fiber wrapped center console because of the. Uh, a uh, bunch of uh, black plastic, which we'll get into a little bit later. But uh, yeah, so without further ado, I think I'll just start up the car because I want to turn the AC on. <laughs> so there you go. Oh, another thing I forgot to talk about on the outside is that uh, I did pick up a vibrant resonator for the car and I'm not going to climb under the car and show, show it to you but I replaced the stock 18 inch resonator with a uh, vibrant 12 inch bottle style resonator just to kind of make the exhaust a little bit louder and it definitely did and so I'm pretty darn happy with that that was a $50 mod so pretty happy with how that turned out I'll go ahead and give you a little rev here <laughs> So, yeah, I think it sounds pretty dope myself. And, uh, yeah, so that's that. Anyway, the first thing I want to mention is these uh, leather seats, which are pretty nice. I, uh, of course, had cloth seats in the uh, previous Accord that I owned. And, uh, yeah, they're pretty nice. They're not they're not terribly, you know, uh, uncomfortable. They're, they're pretty decently comfortable. It's just the only thing I would change about the seats is I wish the side bolstering was a little more aggressive. Uh, if you're, you know, taking a turn in this car or trying to drive aggressively like at all, then you'll kind of slide around in the seat a little bit. And, uh, yeah, I just wish it would hug you a little bit more than it currently does. But, I mean, either way, they're decent. The uh, uh, next thing I want to talk about is the infotainment screen because, uh, you know, that's kind of been a point of focus for a lot of uh, people with this car. And uh, I am pretty happy with it. The bottom screen here is, you know, now a larger touchscreen and the uh, complete system software has been updated. This uh, is actually running on top of Android 4.1, I believe. And so, yeah, so this is now an Android-based operating system as opposed to whatever Honda was using before. I'm pretty happy with this system. It seems to work pretty well. It also does have CarPlay, which is really nice. And uh, yeah, the interface and stuff is just a lot nicer. The screen is higher resolution and it's a little bit more responsive than my 2013's uh, infotainment system was. So pretty darn happy with that. The uh, Also, the stereo in general just sounds 
a lot better than my 2013 did and I don't know if they upgraded the stereo even further or you know I'm just uh, having some sort of placebo effect but when I'm riding in here and I'm playing music, it just sounds really nice. The bass is actually pretty good if you turn it all the way up. And I don't think, I don't even think I have it turned all the way up because it's just so, you know, it can be way bassy, which is uh, pretty nice. So I'm pretty happy with that. Without further ado, you know, there are a couple of things I don't like, however, which we are going to get into now. The list is pretty short, but I feel like I'd have to uh, mention it anyway. Notice the... Uh, complete like overuse of glossy plastic in this interior I am really not a fan of that like at all and uh, before the 2013s used to have a lot of silver and like gray parts and they made a lot of stuff glossy black plastic like this and the center console was included in that which is why I wrapped it in uh, carbon fiber vinyl which I may have to redo because it's starting to bubble and stuff but anyway yeah I did that pretty much just to get rid of the majority of the glossy black plastic in the center console and of course you know this box is uh, glossy black plastic, the AC controls are glossy black, this is glossy black and as you can see it just starts to look like crap after a while. I wiped this down like two days ago and so yeah I'm not a fan of glossy black plastic. I mean I guess it looks okay but I can see this in a few years just looking like crap with like scratches and fingerprints and stuff and just you know general damage that you wouldn't notice too much on like a gray or a you know just a matte black surface so that's one thing I really don't like the other thing I really don't like about the uh, infotainment system is this goddamned volume knob this is like the dumbest thing Honda has ever done and you know I hate them for it <laughs> this volume knob of course there's no there's no not well I guess when I say knob there really isn't a knob is my point normally there's you know a turny knob that you can use this is just a touch screen so either you can like slide up and down like or go up and down like this or you can slide this up and down and I just I really really hate it so this is like the dumbest volume control ever and in the 2018 Accords you know of course they killed the V6 and the coupe but they did bring back the volume control so the 2016 and 17 Accords are the only ones that have this stupid volume control I find that you know I just I use these over here I mean obviously it's the same sort of system and I don't really like it all that much but uh, you know it is what it is I'm, I'm not a fan I'm just really not a fan of that so the other thing, the other small complaint I have with this interior is there is no glove box light. And this is a problem that Accords have had for a while. I don't know why this one doesn't have it. My 1998 Accord LX had that feature and my 1990 Accord DX even had a glove box light. And this one doesn't. Like that's that's the one small complaint I can make uh, with this interior. So, I mean, that's pretty much it. Of course, as mentioned before, I have 9,900 miles. Well, 9,904 exactly. And, uh, yeah, we're pretty close to 10,000. I'll probably at 10,000 the next day or two because I drive a lot. So, yeah, I've, I've only had the car about four months. And uh, I already have almost 10,000 miles on it. So, that's... <laughs> people are like oh how do you drive so much and I'm just like I like driving and I have lots of places to go so yeah pretty that's pretty much it now I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna switch to the driving portion of the review and so yeah let me do that and I'll be right back all right so I do apologize for this not being the best view I was gonna try to put the camera on the dashboard somewhere here but I forgot my uh, I was gonna use tape to try to do it but I forgot that so unfortunately um, you're uh, you guys are stuck in the headrest which is gonna have to be sufficient but we'll go ahead and start driving here so the first thing I want to talk about obviously is the engine which I absolutely love I, uh, I just I this is my first car that I've had with more than 200 horsepower and four cylinders so I'm pretty much over the moon with this engine and the car is just uh the car is pretty quick you know obviously it makes 278 horsepower from the factory and that is uh quite a lot especially when my last car only made 185 and the one before that made 150 on a good day maybe so i'm pretty happy with it sounds really nice too so yeah, again, I really have no complaints with the engine. This is just a, a fantastic engine and I, I'm really loving the V6 Accord. That said, there is one thing I do want to talk about and that would be the transmission. Now, obviously, this has a, a six-speed automatic transmission on this car. I, uh, you know, I, I wanted a manual, but I couldn't find one and you know, honestly, these days, I'm, a, I'm rather okay with the automatic. This is my first automatic car, so it was a little bit of a change for me. 
but uh, you know I'm okay with having an automatic. Thing is, is that uh, Honda's automatic transmissions are unlike pretty much anybody else's in that they are very similar internally to a traditional manual transmission. Instead of uh, synchronizers though, they have clutch packs for every gear and obviously a torque converter. Uh, so yeah, so the, you can think of an, a Honda automatic, or at least this is kind of like 2017 and before, I think the new ones have 10-speed uh, automatics, which are a little different, but you can think of your traditional Honda automatic transmission as an automated manual transmission, and that's really what it is. It, uh, and because of that, unlike you know most cars that have a planetary gear set transmission, this is going to be a little bit less smooth in general. Like, you're going to feel the shifts more, in other words. And so, you know, that is uh, something I have, of course, noticed, and I'm totally, like, used to it. But, uh, yeah, that's uh, one of the things you're going to have to uh, be okay with with this car is that the transmission is not quite as smooth as, you know, other cars. And uh, on that subject, obviously this car has paddle shifters, which, you know, are cool. I'm glad I have them because if I want that sort of manual control, I can have it. Sorry, I had to be tech But uh, anyway, uh, it's nice to have that manual control, although my, my main complaint with the paddle shifters is that they're just not responsive enough. And, you know, there's just like that lag between changing gears with the, trans with the uh, paddle shifters and the transmission actually shifting gears. It's, it's not much, it's kind of like a half second or so, but uh, it is noticeable and it's, you know, something I, I don't really like. And uh, I also have, you know, the, uh, like I mentioned before, I, the, I do have a K-tuner for this car. And the two things I did with it is I disabled variable cylinder management, which is, you know, obviously cylinder deactivation. When this car is on the highway or in low load situations, normally it will change uh, to a three-cylinder mode, which I turned off. And I'm, you know, I'm, I'm very happy with it, with it off. I'm not a huge fan of that feature just because I didn't like the way it felt when driving. But, uh... Yeah, and I also have the uh, K-Tuner improved shifting option turned on, and I, I'm on level one, which is, there's two levels in the K-Tuner software that you can choose from, and that pretty much just speeds up the shifts of the transmission a little bit. And uh, yeah, so that definitely helps with the, uh, the shift speed of the transmission. It does, I have noticed that sometimes it does uh, degrade smoothness even further, but only by just a little bit. And uh, I don't know if that's just my perceived, you know, uh, perspective on the thing, or it's you know actually the case but yeah that's something you're gonna want to uh, keep in mind if you uh, are planning on getting a k-tuner which I would really recommend for this uh, ninth gen Accord it's just uh, an awesome uh, uh, tuning platform for this car I haven't done anything else more uh, in depth with that but yeah and uh, speaking of turning VCM off I've been averaging about 24 to 26 miles to the gallon in most scenarios uh, right now it says I'm getting 27.7 on my trip a which is uh, pretty good but I've been doing a lot of highway driving but uh, normally with my mixed city and highway driving I tend to get about 24 to 26 miles to the gallon and uh, with VCM off that's pretty cool you know I mean uh, I've only seen like maybe a two or three uh, miles per gallon deficit with VCM turned off, which I am more than happy to accept. I can see myself driving this car for a long time. I mean, the only reason I traded in my 2013 is because I wanted a V6, and now I have it. So, yeah. Uh, I guess one more thing I can talk about before I go is that it's had three or two oil changes so far at 9,900 miles. I changed it once at 3,000 miles and a second time at 8,000 miles and uh, it hasn't consumed any oil in that period at all, which was nice because my four-cylinder did. Obviously, it only has uh, 10,000 miles on it, so we'll see as time goes on, but I check my oil every 1,000 miles, and every time I've checked it so far in this car, it's been completely full, and it hasn't gone down at all, so pretty happy with that. This car has also had one alignment uh, at, five, at, at around 5,000 miles. I did notice, you know, the alignment was kind of a little bit off from the factory, so I went ahead and uh, fixed that up. Again, perks of working at a dealership. And so, yeah. Other than that, I plan on changing the uh, automatic transmission fluid between 20 and 30,000 miles. That's just something that every automatic Honda owner should definitely do. And uh, yeah, other than that, that's pretty much all I have to say. This car has been great, and you know, I really, I really love it on you know a, a massive scale. There's just those couple of things which are very minor complaints in the grand scheme of things. I just, uh, again, I absolutely love this car. So, I'd like to thank you guys for watching this rather long video, but I had a lot of stuff that I wanted to get out there. So, 
figured why not make it on my day off. So thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys later.